Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with a video on Pawn Moves Are Forever. It's also number 7 in the series The Pawn Rules. I have 3 positions for you where only pawn moves are made to achieve a winning position. I found the 3 positions in this book, The Joys of Chess by Christian Hesse. Let's have a look at the first example where a player who would become one of the strongest players of his generation is humiliated by the pawn. It is Ruben Fine who played with the black pieces in this game against Harry Borohov, and it, the game was played in Pasadena in 1932. Let's see what happened in this game. e4 from Borohov and knight f6. Ruben Fine was 17 years old and he would become one of the best players in the world in the 1940s and 1950s. He was very young in this game. 17 was very young. Nowadays we see 17 year olds who are seasoned grandmasters but not in those days. So Fine plays the Aljochen defense. e5, knight d5, d4 and now the main move is d6 and let's show you the tabia of this opening. Knight f3 then the bishop goes to g4, bishop e2, e6 then white castles and black plays bishop e7. This is the main line of the Aljochen defense. But Fine made a mistake on move 3 already. He played knight c6. And now white is going to kick the knights around. c4, knight b6 and d5. A pawn sacrifice. Yes, knight takes e5 was played by Ruben Fine. But now comes c5, the sixth pawn move in a row. And this knight has nowhere to go apart from c4. Knight bc4 was played but now the knights are covering each other and are both very vulnerable. So Borohov makes a seventh pawn move in seven moves that this game is in progress. And if the knight on e5 moves then the knight on c4 will fall. Simply removing the defender of the knight on c4. White has reached a winning position with only pawn moves. The pawn rules. Yes, it does indeed. Let's see how this game continued. e6. And now f takes e5 is a big blunder. Taking the piece because of queen h4 check. g3 to shield the check. And then queen e4 check picks up the rook in the corner. And black will win material. So white cannot be too greedy after e6. And Borogov saw it and played queen d4, the first non-pawn move in this game for white. Queen h4 check was played anyway. Fine was trying to trick his opponent. g3. And now the best move according to the engine is queen e7. And then this is the main line. Now white can pick up the piece. e takes d5, protecting the knight on c4. Knight f3. Queen takes c5, that queen is protected by the bishop on f8, and black has three pawns for the piece, but white has a much better position. But after g3, the queen did not go back to e7, fine played it to h6. Another trick. Again, you cannot be greedy, you cannot take on e5, because there's something hanging on c1 with check. And now black will win this game of chess. Black, black is much better here. After queen h6 you can take on c4. Knight takes c4 and queen takes c4 winning a piece. But white played it differently. After queen h6 he played knight c3. Not in a rush to take the piece. After e takes d5 now he took on e5. And Ruben Fine resigned. The black queen is attacked and after the queen moves white will take the pawn on d5 which he's attacking with both queen and knight and black has no compensation for the knight that he is down. Ruben Fine resigned and Harry Borogov had won a game in 11 moves of which the first seven were pawn moves. I'm sure this is a game that he remembered forever. The second game I took from that book The Joys of Chess is a game between NN, Noman Neskio, an anonymous player who played a player with the name of Bruning. And the game was played in Milwaukee in 1908. Let's see what happened here. 
the anonymous player play d4 d5 from Bruning, c4 e6 knight c3 and c5 here it is black who's going to make all the pawn moves we have the Tarash variation of the Queen's Gambit declined and the main line goes as follows. C takes D5, E takes, Knight F3, Knight C6 and then White is going to Fianchetto, his King's Bishop, like this. But White made a mistake on move 4. In the previous game a mistake was made on move 3 but here the anonymous player played Bishop F4. Looks like a logical move but it's not very good. C takes d4, attacking the knight, and taking the pawn back is not that good because of knight c6, kicking the queen. The queen goes to d3 or d1, and then there is d4, and this is already very good for black. If after c takes d4 you play knight b5, attacking the d4 pawn with two pieces, then a6, and you cannot take on d4 now, that would be a bad move, a blunder in fact, because of e5. And that is a fork. You're going to lose a piece. Because if you take on e5, then black wins with... Do you see it? Yes, indeed. Bishop b4 check is a very nasty move. Because the only way to shield the check is to interpose the queen. And black is going to take the queen. So all that after c takes d4, knight b5, a6, and then taking on d4, which is a big blunder. Let's look at one other variation. You can play knight c7 check. Looks very good for white. We give a check. We have a rook hanging in the corner. But black then sacrifices the queen. Quite spectacular. Bishop takes and we again have that bishop b4 check move. The only way is to interpose the queen. Bishop takes, king takes and d takes c4. The dust has settled. And if we do a body count we see that black has two extra pawns in its position. And is better. So all that after c takes d4 and knight b5. In the game white thought he had a different move. He took on b8. d takes d3 was played. Again black only has made pawn moves. The pawn definitely rules in this game on the black side. And when the bishop came back to e5. Looks okay controlling this diagonal. Black took on b2 anyway, making the sixth pawn move in a row. And here white came to the conclusion that he has no way to continue and resigned. Black has threats of b takes a1 queen, winning a rook. And again that same move, bishop b4 check is a big threat. And there's really nothing that white can do to solve both problems in one move. So he resigned. The engine is at minus eight. White is totally lost after only six moves which were all made by pawns. The last position I will show you is a composition by Noam Elkies, an American mathematician and professor of mathematics at Harvard University. In 1996 he composed this game, which is the shortest way to checkmate the king with only pawn moves. Let's have a look. E3 from white. It is white who's going to be checkmated in only five moves. E6, king E2, e5 this is a composition nothing to do with the normal game just to show the shortest way to checkmate there goes the king in the open e4 check king g4 d5 check king h5 and now do you see the checkmate move it's quite nice to figure it out yourself if you have not seen this composition before yes it's another pawn move g6 is checkmate the shortest sequence of only pawn moves leading to checkmate in five moves and our game is also full of pawn moves but also moves from pieces let's put a position on the board it's rick against a chest to impress viewers i am white and you are black and we have arrived at move 16. i have played a4 a5 yes a pawn move nicely in the theme of this video on the 16th move and now it is your move what would you play in this position with black you can take part in this game by putting your move in the comment section underneath this video and by doing so you will be part of this exciting game and also you will be in the raffle at the end of the game i will raffle a chess book 
amongst the viewers who took part in this game. The book is made available by my sponsor, The Best Z, a webshop for chess books. The link is in the description box of this video. So please submit your 16th move for black. I'm looking forward to seeing your entries and I hope you will take part in our game. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.